Hey y'all, Tom D, aka Will B from Random Tandem here, to tell y'all about uh, Dungeons and Dragons Encounters. Uh, I was just gonna do a a quick blog about it, like I did for the the first one, but then I kind of realized that I hadn't been giving much information uh, on what actually happens in the game, and I also keep on letting nights pass in between blogs. So I was gonna make one last week, and then uh this video may end up a little bit chopped up like most youtube videos uh mostly because uh i'm drinking tea see this bowl of tea well you know put it in perspective it's not as gigantic as it seems when it's way up here and why am i drinking tea because it's my video i'll make it however the fuck i want if i want it choppy well there you go jeez get off my ass so anyway D, &D encounters D, D encounters is a game that you play uh at local game stores and uh, I'm sure that you have one someplace. If you can't find one, uh, just go to dnd.com, uh, and on their front page, well, actually, it might be Wizards of the Coast slash dnd. But if you Google dnd uh, or Dungeons and Dragons, it'll take you to their site. And on the front splash pa splash page, yes, enunciation is good. On the front splash page, there'll be this little thing that always says dnd encounters. They're kind of trying to pimp it lately. If you click that, there should be a search engine someplace that'll show you all of your local stores that are doing it. Uh, now it's pretty simple, you just kind of show up and they have uh, people there to guide you through. In fact, when me and Brandy went the first night, uh, we're on night... Well, we're on night th four total, but night three of gameplay. Because night one you spend just making your characters. Uh, the first night we went, uh, actually we showed up a little late. It usually starts at about 6.30 on average. Uh, I guess every store is probably different. But in Minnesota at least, the average seems to be 6.30. Uh, we showed up a little bit late just intending to watch, and uh, they were just setting up still, and they had a huge amount of interest, so the place was just packed, so they were having a hard time finding enough people to run the games, and the tables were really packed, so they were running way behind. And uh, we show up, and this guy kind of notices us watching everybody doing stuff, because I haven't been to the local game store since I was a teenager, and uh, actually I had never played in their back room, so it was a little uh, awkward for me at first. So we show up and this guy is going, this guy notices us, and he goes to us, uh, Hey, are you guys here to play? And we just kind of, eh, yeah, maybe, maybe. And he goes, well, the answer should be yes. And he starts salesmaning us, and he gets us to uh, first sign up for the DCI membership, which is, uh, I'm not going to show it for too long, because I don't want anybody to steal my information. Not that you can really get anything off of this. But uh, the DCI card, hold on here, hold on. There. DCI, which is probably in reverse on this video because it's in reverse now that I'm seeing it. But that is uh, Wizards of the Coast that owns products like Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering and a bunch of other stuff that you've probably heard of people playing. Uh, they have this sort of club where they track online uh, your activities uh, in, in uh, sanctioned game rooms, I guess you might say. Uh, most of it seems geared towards Magic the Gathering, which is actually what led to me and Brandy starting to play Magic the Gathering. Uh, I'll get into that some other time, though. Um, but they do also track uh, how often you play Dungeons and & Dragons, and it doesn't really seem to be of much value for anything. Uh, there don't seem to be prizes or anything. But, um, I don't know, you're, you're in the club then, and that's free, so I guess that's kind of neat. So yeah, we show up. And uh, they sit us at this table. Uh, actually, it was the only table left that could possibly fit seats around it. It was so crammed. And they give us these really neat uh, character sheets, which are sort of all just ready. You fill out all the information you need, and they're just good. That sound means that it's good cardboard. And uh, plenty of space on the back to keep notes about everything that's happening. But yeah, you... Uh, and they had, a, they had a guy there, and actually he's been the guy that we've been playing with ever since, who's the Game Master. I don't know why it needs quotation marks. The air is itchy. Scratching it. The Game Master uh, runs it. He's, he's the guy who tells you what's going on. He controls the monsters, and he kind of he controls fate, more or less. Uh, he decides how hard of a time or how easy a time you're having it. Of course, he's still got to fit everything into the, the mission at hand, so he can't make it too easy or too hard for you. Uh, unless he's, you know, a really unfair bastard, then he can do whatever the hell he wants. But uh, generally speaking, uh, a fair DM, DM, er, GM, Game Master, Dungeon Master, DM, uh, 
Usually, a fair one will just run it more or less pretty close to the book and then give you a break when you need it or, or make it extra hard when you're getting a little cocky. Uh, just kind of keeping you in check because more or less, you're playing the role of a character. Uh, you don't really play yourself in Dungeons & Dragons. You play the character that you've rolled. So, like my character, actually it takes a lot of the uh, the difficulty of actually playing the game off of me because I ended up making a berserker. Uh, and an incredibly unintelligent one, and an incredibly uncharismatic one. Uh, which more or less makes things easy on me, because all that I have to do is run in and hit things with my sword. Brandy, on the other hand, has a bit more of a difficult time, because she has a lot of knowledges. She made a druid, who is pretty knowledgeable in the world in general. So, a lot of times, she'll be the one who's called upon to make rolls to determine what happens. Uh, to determine what kind of information we find out, or that sort of thing. Which, I'll get to that in a few minutes. But, yeah, night one, you set up your character, they have books there, they have a guy there to guide you through it, kind of ask you some questions. You know, what kind of player, what kind of player are you? What kind of character do you want to be? What's your, what's your dream fantasy character? You know, when you read a fantasy book or watch Lord of the Rings, which character do you most identify with? And then you kind of go from there, you sort of decide uh, the type of character you want, and then you, then after you've got the basic information, then you just kind of start fitting little bits and pieces in that make your character a little bit easier to play. Um, like, because I decided I want more of a warrior, and I want someone who's, who's more combat-driven and not so much about, uh, about the storyline. Uh, much more just hit things with your sword, uh, don't negotiate, don't, don't make friends, just hit things with your sword. It became much easier after that, then you choose powers, which are abilities that you can use throughout the game, and you choose your, your equipment, which is, you know, your weapons and your armor. And you just kind of fit those things into what tactically makes the best sense for the character that you decided to play. And after that, you know, after the initial step, pretty much everything else is, is fairly easy. Number filling in for the most part, because you have... I'm not sure if you can see that there, but you have a lot of stats. You have strength, uh, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, uh, wisdom, and charisma. And each one of those has, has these sub-skills. And the skills are used to determine what happens in the game. Now, whenever something's happening, like let's say you want to uh, intimidate someone to get information out of them, uh, you roll a die. Or if you want to negotiate with somebody, or if you want to, I don't know, check someone's pulse uh, to see if they're still alive, or if you want to, um, let me think of some other, some other instances, if you want to search around a dungeon, or, or a room, or, or investigate some sort of natural phenomena to see if there's anything unusual about it, uh, you always roll a die. And you roll a 20-sided die for almost everything in the game, really. And then you take that and you add your modifier to it, which is where your skills come in. And it's all... it, it sounds complex at first, but it gets really easy once you've done it a couple of times. You get a really good feel for it. Uh, so night one, we just kind of figured that out and we ended up chatting for a while and it was, it was pretty low impact. On night two, we actually got into the missions. And D&D uh, &D encounters, a lot of the gripes online, and they're, they're accurate, uh, is that it doesn't really emphasize the role play so much as the combat, which makes sense because it's called encounters. And in game lingo, an encounter is when you're in a battle. So, so it makes sense uh, that D&D encounters would be mostly encounters. Um, but there is a little bit of role playing here and there. Uh, which sort of gets you used to the idea of playing, you know, of figuring out how to play your character. But most of the rest of the time you spend just, uh, just in combat, which is easy enough. 